Hi, my name is Jeremy, and on this channel I talk about color and light. And today I want to talk about something that I think is super exciting and a super powerful tool for artists. And this is the idea of color temperature. Let me go back and talk about this guy in history. His name was William Thompson, first Baron Kelvin. So he created a new scale of temperature called the Kelvin scale. You might have heard of this. Um, zero Kelvin is absolute, can't go any lower. And then it goes up from there. So he used this for the scientific community, how many degrees Kelvin something is in temperature. But we have adopted it in the film industry as, you know, this is what is the temperature of a light or what is the temperature of a camera? And it, it's not degrees that, you know, how hot the camera gets. This is the color. Where is the white balance? So this guy, Kelvin, heated a block of carbon. And as he heated it, it started black. And then as more energy, as more temperature got into the block of carbon, it turned this deep glowing red. And then from red, it went to orange, orange, it went to yellow, yellow, it got white. From white, it actually even kept increasing temperature. It went into blues and it eventually into ultraviolet light, you know, so it starts infrared, goes all the way through this rainbow of color that is natural, the, the spectrum, basically, what we see in the sky, what, you know, that range of a sunset, red, orange, to yellow, to white, to blue, to purple, goes through the rainbow. And this is the idea of color temperature. Now, I have some things like this light behind me is actually a film light that I can control with my phone. So I can take the color temperature of this light. It is currently at 5,500 degrees, which is white light, or I can drop it down and pull it down to 1,500 degrees. And this is this deep orange type color. And as I increase on my phone controlling this light, the color temperature of this light back up through 5,000, 7,000, 8,000, 9,000, all the way up to 20,000 it's into this, you know, rich blue, but there's more to this. So where does this become a powerful tool? This is not just what light do you buy and what color temperature do you make it? This is an amazing tool for artists. And I learned this years ago when I was working on a little film you might've heard of called Ratatouille. At the time, computer graphics were very simple and the way that light and shadow was calculated was a value-based system. You had a light and you wanted shadows, you darken that light. And so as the light would wrap off around the edges, you know, from a single light source would wrap around a character's face, it would go, you know, if the character's face was yellow, it would go to dark yellow. And it looked kind of muddy and gray. And the director of photography, Sharon Callahan at the time, wanted something more. She had observed that light changes not only its value, but also changes its saturation as it dips into the shadows. And as I started to understand this more, it actually shifts the hue as well. So hue, saturation, and value all shift together when light loses in its temperature, when it loses its intensity. So if we start thinking of light is not as how bright it is, but thinking of a light as what is its temperature? How much energy is there flowing through this? So if you look at this, image here of Remy from Ratatouille and I go to the color picker here and I open up my my color wheel here to to see like the bright part of this um, this cheese is yellow but instead of going to a gray yellow as it goes into the shadows it saturates and becomes more orange and more saturated um, so you can see that the, the hue and the saturation change too and this was something that we added into the film the engineers helped us make this render this way instead of going black it goes rich into these richer tones and it was really important to make the food look good so we get these grapes that are light pink on top but as they go into the shadows they get more saturated notice how the saturation really dips into this deep reds versus this light pinks everything in the show had this effect put on it that as the light falls off the saturation increases i was also working a few years after that for Lego. We tried a, a new method of rendering and it just automatically looks better. Why? Why does this look better than this? And this comes down to color temperature. So if I look into the shadows here, you've got light yellow and then it just goes gray. So it goes, it's the same. If I, if I look at the hue right here, it's the same yellow and it just gets darker. So it turns to this muddy yellow and in, it adds black on top of the yellow. And the idea is 
as you go into the shadows, change your hue, saturation, and value together. So the brighter the, the surface is, the least amount of saturation there is. And then as it shifts into the shadows, you'll notice like right here, like this is kind of a mid yellow, and then it goes orange, and then it goes red, and it gets more saturated as it goes into the shadows. See that? See how, look at the color wheel off to the right of how it's changing its saturation and it's, it's getting, you know, darker red and then goes to this lighter desaturated when it's bright, super saturated when it's dark. This is a magic tool. This is an amazing thing you can apply to your art right now. So if I look at the color wheel, it's very interesting that the color always shifts with more temperature. It follows that Kelvin scale and will shift more towards, it'll shift towards white or when it gets hotter and then it, it will shift the opposite way around towards, I mean, I like to think of this as a circle. So if I look at the color wheel over here, it will shift towards yellow when it's hot, it'll shift towards blue when it's cold and blue meaning it'll either swing one way or the other. If, if you have a, you know, a, a warm light source, as it falls off, it will get more and more red and it'll kind of go red into purples and around towards blue. If it's, if it's a more green thing like grass, it'll shift from yellow around to green into cyans. So let's look at something, something the most simple, of course, is something that actually has temperature. When this is colder, it's deep reds. And then as it gets hotter, the reds turn to orange and then the orange turn to yellow and then the yellow turns desaturated more towards white. So the hottest parts of this are more towards yellow and then it shifts away from that yellow into the reds and into the, the, the more saturated, deeper tones. If I look at something like, like a sunset, kind of saturated reds up into oranges, yellows, and you know, gets, gets brighter and a little bit less saturated. If I look at greens, something as simple as this, the brightest part of this is a desaturated kind of minty green. And look at the saturation over here in the shadows compared to on the brightest points. You can see it gets more saturated into the shadows. So instead of just picking one color green and adding black, you can actually shift the saturation of that into the shadows and it will start to look more believable. If I look at skin tones, so if I look here on her cheek, the area that's most lit, it's this kind of desaturated orange color. And as the light wraps off, it gets more and more saturated and shifts more towards red. It's following that natural rainbow, that hue shift through the color wheel as it goes into shadows. It's a very interesting observation about light. And you'll find that color temperature is everywhere. It's easiest to see in super saturated situations, but it happens everywhere. Let's apply this. I'm going to do a recording on my iPad of a very simple painting from scratch. So we're not doing a color study like we have with copying something. We're going to do a color study where we create something brand new. And I'm going to paint using an app called Procreate, which is a great painting tool to show you an, a simple example of how to apply color temperature to painting. So I'm going to start with this simple sketch of a hand and I'm going to have a little flame going above it. I've got a white background. I've got my sketch on its own layer. So I'm going to make a new layer, put this underneath my sketch layer, drag here. Um, I could possibly do a video about how to use Procreate if you haven't used it before, but hopefully you've used it. It's pretty simple. You've got simple layers. I'm going to paint on a layer underneath, um, but for today, I'm just going to start painting. My favorite painting brush is the turpentine brush. I just like its texture in the edges of this. This is one of the standard Procreate brushes. Um, today I'll also be using the soft brush, which um, I've moved these into my own little category called Jeremy's brushes. But for now, that's what this will be. Um, okay, so I'm going to start by saying that this hand will be in a dark kind of blue environment. So I want to get rid of all the white first because my eyes will get confused with that. So I'm going to start with just kind of a, a deep blue here. And if I drag this down in, it's going to fill this new layer, my paint layer with just blue. 
So the next thing I'm going to do, well, I'm going to make a little bit darker blue too here to just kind of paint in some like there's darkness kind of around this, around this hand. And there will be, uh, there'll be more light that's coming uh, from this little orb of, orb of light that's through here. Real time painting. So you can see the whole process. This isn't a cheat or sped up two hours long. Okay, I've got my hand and the first thing I'm gonna do is start with a flame. So I'm going to start with a deep kind of red color for the center of my flame. Here's, here's where my flame is going to be. Right now I'm just starting with a simple color. Um, and then I'm gonna make that red light kind of bleed onto the hand as well. So I'm gonna just kind of put in some red. Now, following the idea of color temperature, I'm going to shift as the light wraps down and around the edge of this hand. I want more saturation and a darker tone, hue, saturation, and value. So I'm going to shift this more towards the, around the, the scale here towards the blue and make it deeper, darker, more saturated, and fill in the shadowed area of the hands. I'm staying super loose with this because this is a color and light tutorial. I'm not worrying too much about edges because I can always clean those up later, but I'm going to not think about what color is the skin. I'm not going to pick a skin tone. I'm going to think about the light and the light's color temperature and fill that in first. So it's a deep saturated red. This person's hand doesn't have to be, they're not a red character. They just have this color that kind of wraps around into the shadow. So I'm going to use that as my base, blend this as I kind of paint. And now I'm going to add the temperature on the brighter end. So in the center of this flame, I can click and hold and it'll let me pick the color that I had chosen before. Now I'm going to shift with color temperature and go towards orange in its core and orange on the hand. This is anywhere that the light is shining from that flame down onto the hand. So I've got to just kind of envision the 3D space in my mind of where does this light reach and wrap down onto the hand from that bright source right here. The center of this source, I'm going to shift towards yellow and desaturate a little and put its core. So that's the, the center core of this light. And I'm going to make this brush a little bit smaller and say some of that hotter temperature of that light is hitting the kind of the, the edges of the hand, the, the places that are facing that light the most, the edges of these fingers around here. Uh, staying very loose with this because the idea is to, to establish those colors right from the start, just in the first couple of minutes, get these, get these colors and these tones and I can always clean it up later like I would do in my other color studies. Okay, I wanna show one other trick that I think is really awesome. I've showed this in one of my other videos as well. I can make a new layer, and this layer I'm going to put into, it's not a regular painting layer, I'm going to put it, if I click this little N here, it's, I can choose different modes. Add mode is a beautiful mode that cannot add dark. It, can, it won't darken anything, it will only brighten things based on the color. So if, if I'm painting on this layer with black, you won't see anything. There's, there's nothing that happens here. But if I paint with, say, deep red, you'll see that it, it adds red. If I paint with orange, it adds orange. And it, it's, it's adding light. So I'm going to undo these moves here. And now I'm going to pick a soft brush, choose a deep, saturated, dark red color, Make my brush nice and big and my opacity low. So now this is going to just paint on glow. So if you notice as I paint, it's going to just make it look like light is kind of blooming this kind of deep color here. So if I can shift this more towards orange, now you can see this is giving this kind of like blooming effect of this is a really bright source and it's adding light around. This is a kind of a cool trick for adding glow. I have to play with this gently. I've kind of bled this over a little bit too much on this side, so I'm gonna make this darker and paint this in back here. I'm gonna go back to my original sketch layers and just turn those off because I just wanna focus in on, on the light here in color. Notice I have a layer now that is just 
adding light, this kind of glow on top of everything. I've decided too that I think I want a light from below that's blue. So I'm going to go back to my additive color layer and I'm going to choose this kind of like blue type tone and then I'm going to softly paint like there's light that's coming from this bottom corner. So this is like some sort of light source that's off screen. And I'm going to have this affect the hand. So I'm going to come back to my main paint layer, switch back to my turpentine brush, and now paint in some of this light. Actually, I think I do need my guide layer to see where my fingers are. I'm going to have some of this light hit the character's hands. So the fingers here, as they kind of wrap underneath. So there's blue light that's happening from from below. And I start with a temperature that's deep and saturated. I kind of work this off into the edges following color temperature. And then as it gets brighter, those knuckles catch more light because they're closer to it. I'm going to shift more towards cyan and brighten this up and, and have that light kind of fade off based on color temperature. Again, this is not about the, the color of the skin. This is about the color of the light and kind of knowing where to wrap this light. Then I'm going to select the color here. It's this kind of almost purpley color. And this is where those lights blend between following color temperature from blue into purple, purples into reds, reds into oranges, oranges into yellows. And that's how I get the color of light kind of wrapping around following color temperature through the spectrum to find the colors of the way I want to kind of paint this, paint this light in this image. I'm going to give a little rim light here of purple just because I think color complexity looks nice and I'm being really loose and scribbly with this. Now I can go into my blending brush and I, I like to use this drawing little pine brush for when I blend. I'm going to turn off my hand layer again and now I can just, I can kind of work on blending some of these colors together to smooth some of this roughness out of this painting. It's, it's very loose, but I'm just trying to do this really quickly as a demo. And I could, I could take another half hour to clean this up, but this is how I would start an original color, an exaggerated form of color temperature to show how to pick colors. And I'm not even worrying about skin tones. I'm just worrying about light how this light kind of wraps. Hopefully that makes sense and gives you a starting point for how to pick and choose colors moving forward. And this is a super speed paint. It's super messy, but it's to convey the ideas. Hopefully this conveyed the idea enough. I'm going to also come back in to my glow layer, the one that's in additive mode, come back to my soft brush and now come back to a, a blue and I'm going to add a little bit of bloom on the blue light, like where it's kind of hitting underneath. And there we go. Uh, not the greatest painting ever, but hopefully it conveys an idea. As you continue to create, I hope this is really helpful. Thanks again for watching. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.